Furthermore, when we cut the throat and the windpipe and the vessel of the neck, the nerve which is responsible for feeling of the pain going to the brain is also severe. So the animal does not feel pain. The animal kicks and breathes. It is due to the gush of the flow of the blood outside the body. The kicking and breathing is not due to pain. It is due to the muscle contraction and relaxation. So the animal dies a peaceful death. In, in the method of stunning, very often the animal dies a painful death after us. So the Islamic method of slaughtering is far more humane. And furthermore, if you slaughter the animal by the Islamic Zabiyah method, the mutton and the meat remains fresh for a longer time because it does not have blood. Hope that answers the question, brother. Jazakallah khair. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm asking this question on behalf of my friend who is a Hindu. His name is Sachin and is an actor by profession. He would like to know why Muslim women are not allowed in the Kabristan or graveyard and if it is the grave that women are not allowed to visit, then does that include the Darga? Mr. has a question that why aren't women allowed to visit the graveyard and there are various different hadith. There are hadith in Sahih Bukhari in which the Prophet said he prevented the women from going, going to the grave. And the reasons may be many because maybe they are very emotional and they may not be able to take the death of a human being. That's one of the reasons. And furthermore, there are other occasions in which the Prophet said that these women are not allowed because of the deeds. Let me restrict it certain women because of the deeds. So this is the reason why women are not permitted into the grave. Though there are scholars, other scholars, who do say that there are, there are different hadiths in which the Prophet did permit certain women to go, depending upon the context. As far as, far as the question concerned that about the grave, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that a person should visit the grave, it will remind you of your akhira. That means it reminds you that finally you have to die. But when you go to the grave, you should pray for the person, not to the person or through the person. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Yes, brother. Your name and profession and your question. Um, my name is Kedar and this is my friend Nazish. My question to you, Mr. Nayak, is that the, the laws that govern the universe uh, have not changed from the time the universe was created. Uh, they were always there since the creation of the universe. So does God have any choice in changing the laws of the universe uh, since time immemorial? Uh, why hasn't uh, God not changed the laws which governs the universe? If, he, he, if the God has no choice in changing the laws of the universe, then why call him God? And uh, the brother asked a good question that the laws of the universe have been same since the time it has been formed. So does God have a choice of changing the laws or not? And if God does not have a choice, then why call him God? I agree with you. It is God's choice that he does not want to change. That's the reason he hasn't changed. He should not follow your choice. So it is God's will that he does not want to change. Now you are forcing him to change. Why should he follow you? If God wants to change, He can easily change. But Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 30, that Allah follows the nature of the law. So this is God's law. If He wants, He can change, but does not want to change. That's His choice. Now you will tell Him that, okay, that God, He wants to make the sun rise from the east and set in the west. The challenge is, you: the, can you make the sun rise from the west and set in the east? The answer is no. But on the day of Qiyamah, one of the signs of Qiyamah is that the sun will rise from the west to show that if God wants, He can do it. So on the day of judgment, Qiyamah, that will happen. How will, I, how will it happen? Allah Allah. So everything Quran says that clearly in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse number 1, it will say that Allah has power over all things that he has power over all things. But Allah does things which he wants. And he does godly things. 
Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes. Any non-Muslim brother there? Assalamu uh, alaikum, brother. Uh, I'm asking this question on behalf of my very close friend. He is a non-Muslim. He don't want to disclose his name, but he's he's an engineer by profession. He want to know Quran does not contradict with modern science, but it says Adam alayhisalam was the first man on the face of the earth. But this goes against the theory of Charles Darwin regarding evolution. But as the question he says Quran matches the science but does not agree with the statement of the Quran that Adam is the first human being, it goes against the theory of Charles Darwin and I agree with you. The Quran does not agree with the theory of Charles Darwin because Charles Darwin is the theory. Quran is a book of fact, not a book of theory. And if you read the book of Charles Darwin, if you read the book of Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, it says that Charles Darwin went on the ship by the name of HMS Beagle, which went on an island by the name of Calatropis. And he saw birds pecking in holes and niches. Depending upon the niches the bird pecked, the beak became small and long. Based on this observation, he propounded his theory of natural selection. But he wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson saying that I have got no 100% proof regarding my theory, but because it helps me in embryology, in rudimentary organs, etc., he has propounded that. Otherwise, Charles Darwin himself agreed that there were missing links. That's the reason in, in school, if we had to insult someone, we used to say that if you were present during Charles Darwin's time, then his theory would have been proved right. Insinuating he looks like an ape. So this is just a theory, it is not a fact at all. I have not come across a single book which is called as the fact of evolution. All of these are theories of evolution. And furthermore, according to P.P. Grasse, he says, it is letting our imagination run too wild just based on few vestiges that we are assuming that we have been evolved from apes. Today, science has found four waves. The Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal man, the first is Australopithecus from the Ice Age, then Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal man. All these, what science has found, there is no link between them. And there is no proof that we have been evolved from ape. And according to Hansis Craig, who is an expert in uh, molecular biology, he says it is absurd just on, based on DNA to assume that our forefathers were apes. It is just an assumption. There are hundreds of scientists who have written against Darwin's theory. Darwin's theory has been proved false long ago. Now something has come on the internet recently, okay, Darwin's theory. These are just hypotheses. Therefore, but certain things of Darwin, that human, that life has been evolved from water, no problem. Quran says that in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 20, verse number 30. So certain things are correct. But as a whole, that human beings have been derived from me, it's unscientific, it's a theory, and that's not a fact. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, brother. Any sister?